Sanmin is a leading global manufacturing company headquartered in San Jose. We're in 23 countries, 60 manufacturing plants worldwide, and we really focus on supporting mission-critical products. And we support companies and customers across industries, communications, medical, defense and aerospace, industrial, and so on. We really saw where Google was going was going to change the trajectory of the capabilities that our employees had. So in supporting our customers, our employees are working in teams around the world, and we really needed a capability or set of capabilities that allowed them to work more efficiently and collaborate. Mavenwave was our trusted partner, our trusted advisor to figure out how this change will happen. We have a lot of change in the shop floor and we need to have the flexibility and be quick, be agile. So using G Suite in the conjunction with other Google technologies like Chrome helped us to have this flexibility and really respond to the business need much quicker. In one way or another, most of our shop floor activities are cloud-based and, and we can more and more leverage that kind of technology. So we're an early adopter of the Reveal video platform from Mavenwave and we're super excited about its potential for internal communication. With Hangouts Meet, what we're seeing is that employees can effectively communicate over distance and time. We can record sessions and we're really leveraging that platform to drive collaboration worldwide. One of the things that really strikes me about Samina is just they have the perfect ingredients to drive digital innovation for the company. They have the vision from their CIO that lays out a Google first philosophy. They have a dedicated and committed employee base that really understands that innovation drives their competition. And they really understand the depth of the Google G Suite platform as an enabler to make it happen. We really looked at Maven Wave's experience and really felt that they had done a lot of great work with other companies. And we wanted to leverage that, but we also wanted to make sure that the program fit our employees and our culture. And that's, that's one of the great things with Maven Wave. They were able to work with us to define that program and design that program. With the support from Maven Wave and from Google, we will have all the help that we need to move Samina to the digital age. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to our session, G Suite, from like to love. My name is Chad Furlong. I'm a senior principal with Maven Wave Partners. Uh, if you're not familiar with Maven Wave, Maven Wave is a consulting firm, a, a Google Premier partner, and uh, we are uh, we're pleased to be here today. And as a shameless plug, we were just named as North America Services Partner of the Year, so I had to get that part in. But anxious to tell you a story today. Thank you about uh, our client with Samina. And today I'm here with my partner in crime, Mario. Yeah, so my name is Mario Zuniga. I am Brachelian, and I speak Portuguese, Spanish, and uh, throw access to relax, <laughs> an Alabama thing. <laughs> okay, well, we're excited about our talk this afternoon, and one of the things that uh, we're most excited about is to tell you a story, a tale, if you will, about one company's journey to fall in love with their productivity and collaboration platform, G Suite. But I got to ask real quick, quick show of hands, how many people here thought that Google was launching a new dating app as part of their service? No? We had heard a little feedback that the title was a little misleading, so I hope we don't have people streaming out of the back of the, of the session. But today what we plan to do is a couple of things. Uh, you're going to hear from the partner perspective. Um, I'll be representing as a services partner the methodology, our approach for helping Samina really get the most value out of their investment in G Suite. And you'll hear from Mario as the client representative about what it was like on the ground. What were the objectives? What was it like to go through this process? We'll start off by telling you a little bit more about Samina and their Google journey to date. I'll describe what we designed as a Mavenwave adoption program for G Suite. And we'll walk you through both our objectives, our progress to date, and then some things. If you're here to go back to your organization, you know, we think there's probably two types of people in the audience today. There's you've already made the G Suite commitment and you want to get more value out of your investment. We hope to give you one or two things you can take back and try in your own organization. Or perhaps you're here to evaluate if G Suite's the right platform. Either way, our overarching goal for today is to really send you home with confidence that G Suite is an enterprise-ready platform. <laughs> All right, so um, you guys are learned a little bit about Sanmina in our video, but here we have some numbers. Uh, so you can read about the numbers, but I would like to call the attention to two things. 
Last year, we shipped 257 million units worldwide. And from all those units, we help our customers to launch 3,000 new products. So just picture how we need to be agile, how we need to respond to change to our customers. So collaboration is a key for our business. And we are trying to leverage more and more G Suite. So that was one of our big motivators in San Mina to go with this G Suite adoption program. So, so <clears throat> um, if you look at the bottom, you will see a little bit uh, all, all the services that we provide in San Mina. So from design and engineering up to logistics and repair services. So we, we can do everything that our customer needs to launch a new products in the telecom market, in the, um, in the industry market, in the defense and space, in computing. Uh, so that's a wide variety of customers, a wide variety of products that we need to manufacture. And we, we can offer all those range of services for our customers. What you're going to hear a little bit in the methodology that we set up to drive this adoption was just accounting for the complexity that you're hearing here. A global organization with that type of end-to-end -end need is what we had to design into the process. Yeah. So we started our journey with G Suite in 2009. We did our due diligence. We tested different options. And by the time, the big motivation for us was cost. So we, have, we had, by the time, servers, uh, the, the, the servers in 70 countries. So uh, just imagine how much work was that uh, to manage, to back up. So just in tapes, we spent thousands and thousands of, of, of dollars there. So that was, was our main motivator. And uh, we have decided to go uh, to G Suite, and we moved 18,000 users in 2009. By the time we need to develop a lot of the migration tools that you guys already have today, um, and we did a pretty good job on that, and a lot of training. And our adoption was pretty good in Gmail and Calendar. Uh, the big selling points were the security, the backup was always there, and don't need to look at your quota. Uh, it was a big selling point, and it was the most transition. But we have never done a lot of promotion of the editors of Docs, Sheets, Slides. But over the time, um, we have a, a very good adoption in IT. So all our processes were, were standardized in G Suite. And we had a few use cases in some locations, in some departments, uh, with very good success um, using all the collaboration features that we have in G Suite. So we have some very good organic growth over the years. Um, around 2016, we saw that the product was very mature, and um, we started to think about a plan to expand the adoption. So the product was much better than in 2009, and we started to have some conversation with uh, with Google about how can we go further, how can we expand the usage and really realize uh, all the benefits from the collaboration in G Suite. So I want to pause for a moment for you guys to read this quote from one of my employees. So change is hard. That's a human nature, right? So if I tell you guys that I have a robotic arm here with me. It's high technology that will make you much stronger. It will make you more flexible, uh, faster. Who would say, yes, I want to cut my arm and get this new thing? Oh, yeah. You are a Google Guide now. So, uh, uh, so that just illustrates how hard it is. So. Um, Changing the way that people work is hard. Sometimes we are changing tools that they are using since the first day that they started to use a computer. So um, it needs a lot of education, a lot of training, a lot of selling. And this was the journey that we started in 2017.
Okay, so let's be clear. I won't belabor this analogy of like to love forever, but I'm going to stay on it for a little bit longer. Samina is still in the like stage. They do not love their productivity platform. They like it. They, right? You're into it, but you're not getting the full value out of it. So this is where we're introduced, Maven Waves uh, growing Google program. In early 2017 is when Mario and I first met, and we were sitting down and talking about what we needed to put in place to actually really move the needle, really commit to this platform, really drive the value they needed. And what we designed was essentially a Maven Wave led adoption program that we're going to walk you through a little bit of what does that framework look like. Um, now, this is an interesting program because it's also one that Google is heavily committed to. So there were, we were supported by a program called the Next Mile program. And this was Google's um, investment, if you will, to let enterprises and, and really support enterprises to drive them forward and show and prove to themselves and to the world that you know, global complex organizations can not only just survive but thrive on the G Suite platform. So we got a lot of, of, of insight from the Google engineering team. We got a lot of um, listening to what was needed to put into the product roadmap. It was a fascinating program. The overarching goal here was to essentially get to the point where Samina was choosing, the employees were choosing G Suite as their primary editor of choice. You know, along with that, obviously, came other benefits that were certainly important for the business case. Reducing rationalization of other legacy editors um, that they did no longer have to invest in in terms of licenses to get rid of those. Um, and just an overall TCO model that we put in place for them. So that was the driver here. Essentially, I think we were bringing, Maven Wave at this point was bringing project leadership, deep experience with G Suite, a lot of change management experience to really help the, prog the program be designed. So on Samina's side, so we really wanted to increase the user adoption. Um, we saw the potential, as I mentioned, so we really believed that the tools were very, very close to be ready, but we still needed some support from both Google and Maven Wave with the expertise to grow uh, the usage uh, of G Suite. Also, we wanted to reduce the dependency of our legacy suite by 80% by the end of 2018. So this is your goal, and we are working towards that. And we want to realize uh, cost savings in license in about two to three million. Um, that's all about the renewals of many of the productivity software that we have in place today. And we also have a parallel effort, uh, a different program for Chrome adoption. So we are rolling out a lot of Chrome devices uh, worldwide. We have about 4,000 devices, and we are still working. And if we bring our users to G Suite, so we have one more factor to bring them to Chrome as well. And instill the culture of collaboration. So this is something that already exists in Sanmina. We are growing. And uh, with the G Suite capabilities, we can collaborate with the geographically distributed teams that we have in more than 50 countries. I want to talk a little bit about the results that we have so far. So um, on the adoption of the G Suite editor. So um, just an, as an example, in Google Sheets, we grow 37%. So this is, this is huge. So you can see here the chart uh, for these about 12 to 15 months that we have tracked that. And um, in, so we are tracking the users that are using just Office and they are on the 5% right now. And the users that just use G Suite, 34%. So just this ratio tells a lot. So seven more, seven times more users are using just G Suite than are using just Office. We still have 61% of the users that, that are using both editors. And we are working on them to, uh, to remove all the impediments, all the roadblocks. Uh, with both with Google, getting new features, and we're testing new features on the Swiss Tester program. And also with Maven Wave, we are trying, uh, we, we are working to design new solutions that are G Suite focused, uh, so we can increase more the adoption. And I think the takeaway from this slide as well is it's a journey, right? Like, like an investment in any relationship or any, any journey you're on. Um, we're pleased with this progress so far, but we know there's more to come, and it's just it's an investment you have to, to, to make over a period of time. 
yeah, this is a journey that we are still on. So, so as I mentioned, the target is to reduce by 80% by the end of 2018. Um, and we are choosing a phase approach. So we are working with all the regions. So we started with pilots, and we are rolling out through all the regions in San Mina. Um, we have completed 22 locations so far, and these locations represent 40% of all the Semina users. So looking at the reduction metrics and at the adoption metrics, so just by working with 40% of the users, we already have very good results. So that means that our users that we have not touched yet, they are starting to use, they are already using some, but at the moment that we start to engage more with them and we show all the benefits of, of the collaboration, we will get much more buy-in from them and grow on a faster pace. Okay, let's dig a little bit into the framework and how we went about, about this effort. The headline of this is, in essence, this is a change management initiative. I'm going to walk you through various facets of it, and there's some technical development components in it for sure. But at the end of the day, this is about really helping employees understand, um, go through their own learning about why it's important, and adjusting their own jobs to be effective. So that's kind of the core message through this whole thing. But we designed a fairly straightforward four-step process for how we approach this program. You know, just thinking about the plan and analysis phase, there's two things you got to get right here. So one is, that's essential to this effort, is planning out your change network. We call them Google gurus. You know, it's those advocates in your organization who are already passionate about the platform. They're the ones that you can go to. They have local credibility. You know, in a, in a complex um, multinational company like Samina, think about a small project team of seven, eight people trying to move the world. It's just not going to happen with eight people trying to convince or cajole or influence a 25,000 person organization to make this transformation. So you have to find those people, those gurus out there that you can enlist and get them to do the work. That's one part of your planning you got to get right. Um, the second part is figuring out your segmentation of your user base. So avoid the boil the ocean, spread the peanut butter, treat everyone the same. As you know, in each of your organizations, different functions, finance is different than supply chain. You know, Asia Pacific region is different than Europe, and you have to speak to them in, those, um, in their terms. So a lot of the time up front is spent on thinking about those two elements of getting your guru change network correct, and also finding out your approach for rolling this out across the organization. Reframe and train is essentially Part of it's what it sounds like. We have to make sure there's a foundational level of understanding about how the G Suite platform works. So those are the features and functions. You have to make sure the employees know how to use the platform for sure. And we did that through a multifaceted training approach. Some of it was online, video-based, you know, on demand. You could use the G Suite training application. And some of it was you know, very strategically thought out, in-person sessions. A lot of it around sheets, because that's one of the things you're going to hear in a minute that we really have to think about is how that transition from an Excel world to Sheets works. So we really have a focus on that. The reframe component is that change management element to think about what's in it for the employee, communication, um, how to rethink about their job a little differently than they have in the past. And so we spend a lot of time on collateral that helps drive that. The third piece here of transform processes is a series of workshops called Transformation Labs that we would tend to do around the world. And the whole goal there was to harvest out all those blockers for why employees were challenged with adopting G Suite. You're going to hear about those in a second, what those were. Um, but these are fascinating sessions. We got a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of listening well, and then some solutioning and prototyping for how you might overcome those. Um, you know, a simple example um, could be uh, someone who uses a, a given process today that's maybe perhaps tied to um, a form in Microsoft that you have to look at and we, we need to figure out a different way of doing that. Perhaps it's done through a Google form instead of through an old uh, Word format. So you think through all those steps and, and clear them up. And then finally, the technical friction removal. You know, that can be uh, various things. A lot of it has to do with, with macros are, that are out in the organizations that need to be addressed. Um, sometimes it's how you access data. So if you think about large enterprise applications in SAP or in Oracle, 
trying to get data out of those systems, we could do some technical development to make it easier to access that data in a G Suite world. What underpins all of this is taking a data, this is the differentiator about what I believe Maven Wave brought to the table, and it's, it's taking a data-driven approach to, for each of those four areas. We had a technology partner in Softwatch that was, um, has a, a product that helped us evaluate user um, usage patterns and helped tell us where is there already fire and passion for G Suite that you can go grab and, and harness that through your guru network. Let the data tell you where to go focus on. Um, don't try to guess through anecdotal evidence. Be, be data driven. Those are the key points of the framework. Yeah, so, so to apply this in Semina, we tailored that and we adapted to our culture. So that's one of the great things of working with Maven Wave. So they really understand our culture, our organization, and we adapted this methodology to our reality. So after some experience, we realized that we need to do a, a project by location with a six week average duration. Um, we, we completed five regional pilots in all the different regions in, in North America, in Asia, in, in Europe and in South America. And uh, we learned a lot with that and we tweaked our methodology there. As I mentioned, we completed 22 plants already and, and touched 40% of the users. We have training sessions, three to five live sessions per plant on the pilot plants. And we record this, uh, those sessions and share these among all the other sites. We have created a Google a growing Google site, and we localized that to six different languages. And, but that was not the only point of communication. So communication, communication, and communication is the key. So whenever we started a project, two weeks before then, we, we, we started to spread posters across all the sites, at, at the break rooms, at the offices, in the cubes, just to create awareness. And, but, but when we leave a site, we don't stop there because this is continuous. This is a journey. So we are doing monthly meetings with all the Google guys worldwide. When we are sharing the new features that are coming from G Suite, we are sharing some use cases from a plan that is using G Suite to resolve a business process, to improve a business process, and share with all the audience worldwide. And we also record that and share it with everyone. We run 20% of transformation labs on each site, um, 20 transformation labs. And uh, on these sessions, we brainstorm about the process that are depending on the legacy suite, and we try to find ways to do that better and leverage all the advantages from G Suite-like forms, for example, something that doesn't exist in, in the legacy platform. And we, we have a form exception tracking process, so whenever someone needs to stay on the legacy office suite, they need to justify and list all the reasons for that. So we are tracking that, and whenever Google resolve that, that roadblock, we can go back to those users and say, now you can use your suite. So there's, there's no more roadblocks for you. And um, when we were removing the tech friction, so we mapped 34 known issues that were high priority or showstoppers. So those are the valid reasons not to go to the suite 100%. And we are working close to Google to show what are the things that we need them to improve. And so far, they launched a trusted tester that, that addressed 30% of all those, those known issues. So it's a great process. Um, they are still working on it. There are some that are really, co uh, r really complex from the technical side, but they're still working and committed to this. Uh, we have mapped 1,000 macros worldwide and um, something that we have no idea. So just by going and talking to the plants is when we realize that we have all that. And we are working with Maven Way to convert them to app scripts or to app maker and in G Suite. And, but we also found a lot of developers in the different locations that were doing macros, that were doing access development. So we, we are training them in app maker, we are training them in app script, and we are, I think in two weeks, we are launching our own internal self-paced training for app scripts. And this will be 
available for anyone in San Mina that wants to learn how to automate the processes in AppScript. The thing I would add on there, Mario, is just if you think about, some, you might be sitting in the audience today thinking 34 showstoppers. Wow, wow, wow that's a big list. Um, I think you know, we were, had a very pragmatic, realistic approach to this. And one of the things I was most impressed with was our access to the Google engineering team. So just very open to our feedback, wanting to know exactly what the blockers were, how they could help. And I think that's one of the facets I think you would experience as you go in is just how open they are for feedback to drive the roadmap going forward. OK, let's keep it real here. Um, I'll keep the poor analogy going on. But like any relationship, there, as you're moving from like to love, there's bumps in the road. So what we wanted to do was just kind of give you the themes of where we tended to spend a good portion of our time, whether it was training or doing transformation labs. You know, these were the three or four areas that we tended to have to overcome. And what I would also highlight on this screen is there's a mix here of reality and perception. And that's a little bit of what the, our job was as a program team, was try to really get to the core issues that were there and we had to help users overcome. And what was just a thought about what the platform could or could not do? Um, and a good example of that, I'll start with just talking a bit about the, the idea of working offline. That in and of itself is a paradigm switch. If you're moving in an organization where you're on-prem and you have all of your docu documents stored locally, to think about a business trip where you're on an airplane with perhaps shaky Wi-Fi or no access, it's like the perception is, what am I going to do for four hours? I can't be productive. And a lot of what we were doing was debunking the myths that existed in organizations. There are absolutely realities embedded in here, but if you approach them right and you have strategies for overcoming them, it completely goes away. For example, think about working offline. One of them is most people didn't realize that the artificial intelligence built in to drive and editors watches your pattern of using documents and automatically caches into the browser the documents it thinks you're going to need at any time. So there are, they are accessible offline. That's cool. Didn't know that. So there is a little bit of just there's that element. If you don't want to leave it to chance and think that the machine learning is smart enough to know what you're going to need on the flight to, you know, back to Chicago, you, there are ways to go in and just tick off the files and drive that you want to make sure are automatically, you know, I designate this one to be there available in the browser when I'm in you know, row 24C. So that's just a training tip. A lot of people didn't know how to get to that. How do I mark those? So if I don't have Wi-Fi, it's there. So just to give you a little flavor for the type of, of um, issues we would work on in the transformation labs to address that pillar. And there's a lot of users that collaborate with users that are not in G Suite, right? So they need to, to send documents back and forth. And uh, also the conversion fidelity is something that we know that is not, not working 100%. So we have some, some, uh, some ideas that we share with our users, with our Google Guides, that um, if you need to convert a document, so just convert it once, you tweak it, and then you publish a new template that is that will be your new template for everything. And then if, if you need to create more, silly, uh, more documents of the same type, it's already there. And um, we, uh, there are also some, some new features that are coming that are still interested tester that we cannot tell much about. But that there are some very exciting features that will allow the, the collaboration with external users and to edit uh, the Office files in G Suite. Yeah, let me talk about spreadsheets for a second. Um, San Mina was a heavily, uh, was, a, was an organization that used spreadsheets a lot. And, um, you know, it's an area we spent a, a lot of time on. And, you know, macro conversion is one thing we've touched on. And we really had to think about that. There, you know, Excel traditionally has been a big part of many organizations. So you got to think about how you transfer that over. So we set up an agile development team that allowed us to send to them macros that needed to be converted from VBScript over to AppScript and get it into Sheets. Um, so we had a whole approach for how you evaluate that, how you groom the backlog, how you get it into the Agile Dev sprints and get them over. So there's that whole element of just take, taking care of the technical issues. Performance and scale, you know, just in the last 16 months since we've been working together, this is one that's been addressed primarily through Google's roadmap. Um, there was a day when it was painful to open a sheet up with any kind of volume in it. And, you know, I'm pleased to say we've seen 
two step changes in scale and performance about what can be handled in terms of number of cells and size of, of, of sheets. So that's, that's been addressed more through roadmap than anything we've done. And the last one's a really common use case that I alluded to earlier, this idea of how do I get data out of Salesforce or Oracle or SAP. I want to download that report into Excel and pivot it out. So just doing some work around getting that data into Sheets directly so you could do the same work. That's a big focus area for us. So, and, um, and the last thing is, is culture. So we, we are trying to, to change the culture, to, to changing the way that people work. So it's very critical that we select the right people to lead this change. So we have a very clear criteria when we went to a location and, and we were selecting the Google Guides. And we, we pick and choose the leaders, the ones that have good relationships in their departments and that they were open for change. So they wanted to try new things and they wanted to review how they worked. So um, in that way, they will be able to really look at the advantages that we have in G Suite and look at all the potential that they can leverage and improve the way they work and, and, and so on. And as part of the culture change also is all the communication and the continuous communication and training that we need to, to do in this journey. Okay, so we thought it would be useful for you to return home and show the value from spending a week in San Francisco. You know, if, if you had a couple tips that you could implement next week. Um, ah, we hit the mark. A lot of cameras just went up. I think this is our best slide yet. Um, so these are some like more, they're more tactical things that we think that really move the, really move the needle. So, and the other thing is that um, we have been doing a lot of conversions of the templates that we have in G Suite. And um, when we went to the, the, the sites, we learned a lot of those templates. And um, it was a little bit challenging at the beginning with some of the more complex ones, but we were able to start. And uh, we have a lot of, of them now published in G Suite. Yeah, another quick win is the first one here that says, you know, just think about the natural refresh cycle many of you have with your PCs. So every two to three years, you know, the computer's coming up for refresh. One idea is just don't, you know, don't start by not putting Office on it. I mean, there's, that's one element of a quick win where you can um, really, by exception only, do you get it and really promote the G Suite platform. It's a signal to the organization that we found to be effective uh, at several different clients. Um, so it's like... Uh, is one of the tools that are, is more advanced, so we can create pretty good presentations with advanced uh, graphic features, and it's improving over this year that we are working together. It has improved a lot uh, with integration with sheets and charts and automatic updates. So uh, we are establishing a standard that there's no reason to, uh, to use PowerPoint for, uh, for our internal meetings. Um, so we really believe that slides, is ready to use for 90% of the case, for 99% of the case, I'll say. Yeah, and I'll piggyback on that thought, because you know who the biggest offenders are here? Who do you guess asked for PowerPoint, or supposedly, in the organization? Executives. executives. So this just says, go talk to your executives and say, tell people if the only reason you're doing slide, or PowerPoint is for us internally, for uh, executive leadership, don't do it. It's only slides internally. Right? If you need to do something for a customer or external, you know, that's fine as an exception. But it's just a quick win. We, we felt this had some moving the needle. Yeah, uh, and we had some executives that were, were pretty blunt about that. So if they receive a PowerPoint, just get back. I don't accept it. Send me in slides. Yeah, and they want to know why you couldn't do it because that unearths another blocker that you can go address at that point. This last one's an interesting one, too, that we put into practice. If any of you are fitness fans or follow dieting trends, you may have heard of IF or intermittent, intermittent fasting. So we stole that idea, and we've used it a little bit, this notion of a myth buster that people will say, oh, I, couldn't, I can't use just G Suite. I, I have this reason or not. Pick a day of the week. Pick a week and just say, as a team, we're going to commit to using G Suite here and just see, really, what are your blockers? So fast from other editors, you know, don't use those and really commit to using it. And at the end of it, look at your list. What were the things you really couldn't do so that your team can now go deal with those through training, through process labs, 
or you know, different methods overcoming those. And we have the last item here in red because this is not really a, an idea, but a pitfall. So we try to use the same methodology, the exact, the same exact methodology to all our plants. It worked most of them, but in some plants because of the organization that was lean um, uh, and other characteristics of that business, we, we couldn't use the exact same methodology. We failed. So we, we have to go back to the drawing board and come with a different approach for those sites that needed uh, a more lean, lean approach, a more lean methodology. And we are still working on that, but we are already seeing the results. Yeah, just don't, just be comfortable, you know, calling in audible and adjusting on the fly to meet the plant size needs. Okay, we're going to wrap up here. We'll leave a few minutes for questions at the end. But just to underscore, you know, if we had to highlight a couple of critical success factors um, that if you're trying to do this in your own organization, just to keep in mind, one, just can, cannot underscore how important it is to establish a leadership and change network. It goes without saying on any kind of large transformation program, you have to have executive sponsorship to say this is important and create that air cover for your organization. But even more important, likely, is establishing that guru network, right? Those local advocates with credibility that are going to do the training, going to do the safe um, coaching with their colleagues to show them how G Suite can really work for them in a great way. That's key to set up. Number two, we talked about Samina's approach. Start with a friendly group, right? If you're going to roll out by function or by region or by business unit, whatever makes sense in your organization, think of those areas that you go, you know what, if we're going to start this, I know Mary or Joe in this area already is a believer. Let's start with them. Straightforward point, but it really does work. Start with your friendlies and iterate from there. And then finally, let the data lead you, which is just saying, if you're working in a large or global organization, like anything, if you're trying to do transformation across the whole globe, it's just a daunting task. And so we really believe the number one differentiator is use tools that give you data to tell you where to focus. Who are your advocates? What are the groups out there that have a usage pattern that indicates they're ready to go now? Which are the groups that have a usage pattern of the platforms that say, I got some work to do here, and then set your plan up based on what the data tells you? So we'd like to end our presentation with our quote from our CIO. Um, so we have established a Google first philosophy in, in San Mina. So we strongly believe on the power of the cloud, and we have been adopting more and more cloud services over the years. And today, whenever we have a new business problem, whenever we need a new project, we, are, we always look at, can we resolve this with Google? Even if it's not only G Suite, but we have the Chrome program as well, and we are going on the direction to move our workloads to, uh, to GCP as well. So um, this whole, ecosystem will help us to be more agile, to have the flexibility, and to respond to the business needs that we have. So as you saw by our numbers, we need to respond real quick to our customers. And in closing, we ask you the question, do you like or do you love your G Suite platform? There's things you can do about it. Thank you very much.